Uh, we are also uh, looking for liturgists. Um, looks like October 22nd is open, if anybody's interested. Um, it's it's a, just a good feeling to, to be a liturgist. I'm right here next to this man, I just love him. He's a yeah. great guy. Um, <laughs> and I believe that's that's it. Um, at this time, um, I'd like, um, like to invite Art up here. He'd like to say something. I am pleased and honored to be here this morning with Nancy Thomas representing the Board of Deacons and the session has so honored me to speak on their behalf this morning on this special day to recognize Reverend Dr. Murray Thompson on, as I said, this special day, Pastor's Appreciation Sunday. Yes, it's not a termination call. <laughs> <laughs> As you may all remember, Murray joined us in August, on August 1st, 2022, when our former pastor departed for a new position in the Presbytery. But this time, the blessings of the good Lord looked down upon us and knew that we were a good people, a good church, a faithful followers, and what we needed was a new shepherd. The normal period of time for most of you who are Presbyterians know are 18 months. Drastic, but drastically this time was reduced to one month. We are doing a little bit better this time than our Congress are doing in getting an appropriations passed. <laughs> but as I said, it was one month. The Reverend Dr. Murray Thompson was called to serve as the moderator to the session and he became available as a part-time pastor. I can tell you every member of this session immediately recognized that we better grab this guy because this is a blessing from the good Lord. So we quickly acted, eh, the Presbytery authorized us to hire him as our part-time minister. As I said in August 22, the Reverend Dr. Murray Thompson became our, our pastor. Through the loving grace of our dear Lord, he provided us with not just a minister, but a pastor, a good shepherd, a man full of grace, compassion, and understanding, a man full of love, a man steeped in faith and strong theological knowledge, a man who is there for us in times of joy, laughing with us, a man who is there with us in times of sorrow and trouble, holding our hands, and yes, sometimes even crying with us. Putting it very bluntly, someone who is just a friend. We are thankful, Lord, for the blessings you have provided us through Murray. We ask that your continued grace guide, provide guidance to Murray, Karen and this congregation as we travel forth on our journey of faith. Following the worship service this morning, there will be a reception in the Miracle Building recognizing Murray for his faithful service to God and to this congregation. At this time, you will have the opportunity to speak with Murray and his faithful and loving partner, Karen. At this time, I would like to ask Nancy to come up and then both of us have presentations for Murray on behalf of the session and the Board of Deacons. On Appreciation Day, the Deacons want to honor Reverend Dr. Murray and Karen Thompson by making a donation to the Northeast Site Services, which is located in Exeter, PA. Thank you again for all you do for Trinity. Mary, will you join us up front here? 
superintendent wants to take a Make picture, sure you'll stand <laughs> between <laughs> us. I'm play trucks with you. So in a very real way, this has come truly as a complete surprise to me and uh, my wife, Karen, who unfortunately could not be with us today because many of you know she recently had a hospital procedure. Uh, but on behalf of both of us, I want to extend uh, our joint gratitude and uh, the fact that God, out of his infinite wisdom, saw fit to bring us here to serve all of you. You're a magnificent congregation. Both Karen and I truly enjoy uh, serving this congregation in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This certainly goes way beyond anything either of us have ever expected. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And I pray that God will continue to bless all of you for many years to come. Thank you very much.
That was wonderful. Thank you, Pam. Uh, please join me in the call of worship with response. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the God of Father. The God, the God, Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ who, who is the great mercy, we men, men and women, have, have been born again to the life full of hope through Christ's Christ rising Christ from the dead. Therefore, let us gather together and sing praises unto his name this day. Amen, amen. 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 May, May his name be praised this day. day. speak with tongues of angels, though my voice is touched with gold, without love each word is discord, clanging brass and cymbals bold. is imperfect many gifts will pass Bye. 
But the greatest gift is love. Faith and hope will last forever. But the greatest gift is love. Thank you, Jessica. That was absolutely beautiful. Now a call to confession. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk, walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Therefore, let us confess our sins on this day. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own needs. We have gone along with evil, with prejudice, warfare, and greed. God our Father, Help us repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear and good friends, as we draw together at this sacred hour, I ask of you who was in a position to condemn, but only Christ, Christ who died for us, Christ who rose for us, Christ who prays for us. Know this day that you are forgiven and be at peace, I pray. Amen. seated. Again, thank you, Jessica, for you, your most beautiful anthem this morning. Thank you so very, very much. Well, my friends, I see it's already time for us to spend a few moments with our children gathered here this morning. And as I look over the face of the congregation, I think I see, yes, I do see heads popping up from behind pews. Kids, come on up. Let's spend a few moments together. I, oh my, we have a handsome group here this morning, a lovely group. They keep coming and coming and coming. This is wonderful. Anybody? All right. Good morning, kids. Good morning. How are all of you? Good. You know what day of the week it is? Sunday. Sunday. That's right. What do we do on 
Sunday at church? Eat ice cream. Eat ice cream. <laughs> I can't wait for the reception to have ice cream in her way. Well, possibly. What else do we do? We worship. We worship God. Okay. All right. Hold that thought for a moment. Here's a question. I'm going to ask you a question today. It's a very important question. How many of you like to go to work? I know. What? 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 How many of you like to go to work? My daddy goes to work. Oh, your daddy goes to work. Okay. Uh, you go to school. So doesn't that involve a little bit of work? School? Well, let's think about this. Work. What if, what if, for instance, your parents approach you after church today and say, Dear, we have work to do at the house. Today will be a cleanup day at the house. And I especially want you to pick up and clean your, your bedroom or your play area, pick up all your toys. How would you respond to that request? Oh, dead silence. <laughs> dead silence. Work. This means work. Oh. Well, speaking of work, how many of you would like to work with me following the reception this morning, cleaning the Miracle room here at church. How many would, you would like to do it? I love cleaning. You love cleaning? <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Well, three yeses and the rest are all no. Oh, well, here's another question. Since we've explored this issue of work, how many of you like to play? Most of you, not everybody. Most of you like to play. Okay. So if I were to approach you following church this morning and say, hey, kids, let's go play. How many of you would go play? Me. I'm going. Okay. All right. A little bit of a difference there. This just shows, I think, that there's a big difference between, yes, I'll do it, or no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go to work. I don't like to go to work, but I like to play. Now, this all has to do with how strong your relationship is with the person who asked you to go to work or to play. Some people say, oh, yes, take me. I'll go to work. Take me. I'll take me. And you know what they do? They kind of fiddle around, delay, take their time, and maybe get there. Others, whom I ask would like to play, well, they might go right away in response to that request to go play. It kind of goes back and forth. Between yes, I will, and no, I won't. This has to do with what God asks of us. Sometimes he asks us to do things, and we say, oh, yes, right away. And then we delay. Or we say, no, I won't. But then later on, change our mind and go ahead and do what God asks us to do. It's kind of a two-way street. But you know what the most important part of all this is? Having a relationship with God. Here comes somebody who brought her play cup with her. Okay. Having a relationship with God. And for those of us in church this morning, it's having a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus. 
very important. God wants to be in relationship with all of you, with all of us gathered here as we go through life together. So the next time, your parents or grandparents ask of you if you would uh, like to go to work, think carefully about your response. Or do you want to go play? Think carefully about your response, because it can go both ways. Well, it's so great to see all of you here this morning. My goodness, what a lovely group. Isn't this a handsome group up here this morning? Oh, wonderful. Well, let's have a quick word of prayer, okay, kids? Lord, we thank you for the gift of Sunday morning, the gift of friendship that you share with us through your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit himself. I pray that you bless all of our children here, bless our congregation, and help us, O oh Lord, to always but always respond to your call to us, your call that is so vital to the life that we have here on your good earth. Bless us, bless all of our children, I pray, in the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, children. Thank you. My goodness. Be seated. As we stand before the Holy Scriptures this morning, we see we're in our first lesson is from Isaiah, the ancient prophet Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7, which is commonly referred to as the Song of the Vineyard. You will listen carefully for the word of the Lord as the Lord speaks to you this day. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. 
And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. We continue now by way of Matthew's Gospel in the New Testament, chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. We're in at this time, we see that the authority of Jesus is questioned. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven? or of human origin. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first son and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later, he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For, God, for John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Amen. If I may this morning, as I look to, toward the rear of our sanctuary, I see a handsome young man back there, a new father, Ian. You two are a handsome couple. And I can't wait to hold the baby, hopefully following the service this morning. And today I offer, if I may, my thoughts by way of this sermon in your honor as new parents. So what do you think? What do you think about these passages? Particularly the last one that I read to you, uh, it seems to me that this parable that is before us is truly a, shall we say, a slam dunk? Don't you think? Yeah. You know, when you read it, it, it seems pretty simple and straightforward, relatively easy to understand. Huh. A man has two children says to one, <laughs> Timmy, I need to have you go out and mow the lawn. Timmy says, mow the lawn? I hate mowing the lawn. I absolutely will not. Forget it, Dad. But then, sometime later, the kid thinks to himself, oh, what the heck. The lawn does need to be mowed. So he fires up the old Briggs and Stratton Toro and goes out and he cuts the grass. Meanwhile, the father goes looking for his second son, finds him upstairs in the bedroom watching, as you can probably guess, MTV and talking on the phone with his girlfriend, Lola. Michael? I need you to go out and take care of the yard, rake the leaves. Oh, sure. I'll get right on it, Dad. No problem. 
But when do you know it? Just as soon as his father leaves the room, the kid turns up the volume on the television set, big screen TV, and he get, gets back to whatever he was discussing with his girlfriend, Lola. Now ask yourself this. If these were your kids, which would you appreciate the most? Which of the two did the right thing? Which of the two sons did the will of his father? Well, let's take a vote. All of you here at Trinity Presbyterian Church this morning, all of you in favor of the kid who first said no, but later came around and did what his dad wanted, Raise your right hand. That's pretty good. You're already being sucked in. <laughs> and all of you in favor of the second kid who said that he would, but he didn't, raise your left hand. Very interesting. Well, yeah. This parable is not so simple. It would be nice if we could just put it out there and say this is what it's all about and then we could all go home. But you know something? The honest truth is it's not quite that simple. And the reason I say this is because I don't know if you realize this or not. Here is an interesting biblical fact. Did you know from reading your history, from studying your Bible, that in various ancient manuscripts of the Gospel of Matthew, there are actually three versions of this parable? Uh-huh. You might want to research this a little bit later on this afternoon. Three versions of this parable. Amazing. There's a version that we just read that has been preserved in the Bibles that we use here in the Western world, if you will. But then there's a second version in another early edition of the Gospel of Matthew in which the only change is a reversal of the order of the two sons. The first son says yes, but then doesn't follow through. The second son says no, but does follow through. What can I say? There's not too much difference here. But then, when you know it, to mess things up for both of us, there's a third version. And I think it's kind of fascinating. And I'll bet you'll never guess how it differs from the version that I just read to you a few moments ago. In the third version of Matthew... Jesus asked the question, which of the two did what his father wanted? And it's answered in what I think is a rather astonishing way. Well, must be the second son. The second son, all the people answered without any hesitation at all. The one who said yes, but meant no. How can this be? How on earth could anyone choose the second son over the first son? Here is something that I believe is a key to the whole passage that is before us. Way back when, in the ancient East, Middle East, and this is still true today, there was something about this thing called honor. Honor. A man's honor was his most important possession. And honor required, get this, honor required that children never talk back to their father. 
or to refuse to carry out a parental order. And the reason for this is because to do so would be to bring their parent embarrassment and shame. And so it happened that this first son who responded to the direct request from his father by shaking his finger in his father's face and telling him to go take a hike committed a very, very grave sin in the eyes of the ancient world. And the other son, even though he failed to carry through on his promise, you recall he at least acknowledged the authority and the dignity of his father by giving a public, yes, dad, I'll do it. Have you ever been caught in the middle of something like this, a yes and no intersection in your life? A number of years ago, Karen and I found ourselves in a place called the City of Brotherly Love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Most, if not all of you, I'm sure, have been there at one time or another. Well, lo and behold, Karen and I find, uh, found ourselves having dinner that evening in a Middle Eastern restaurant. Interesting. During the course of our time there at the table, I got thirsty. Ah, oh, refreshing. And I asked our waiter for a bottle of water. No, not the kind with gas. Not missed gas, just the regular bottle of water. And the waiter said to me, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away. Well, 20 minutes later, the bottle of water had still not arrived. And when I asked the waiter where it might be, the waiter's response was, yes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming and so on and so on, that conversation went for another 15 or 20 minutes. But here's the point. This is a mark of a good Middle Eastern waiter in many cultures around the face of the globe. He or she will honor the guest, yours truly, and my wife, they will honor the guests by saying yes to every request, even if they mean no. At the very least, the second son respected his father's honor in our story before us this morning. Now, interestingly, did you notice that in this, this story from Matthew's gospel this morning, Jesus never really does acknowledge the answer given as being correct. Fascinating. I have learned over the course of many, many years of biblical study that the parables of Jesus are filled with all kinds of surprises. And most of the interpretations are based on Middle Eastern customs, even to this day. And the puzzling nature of this parable, I think, is reflected in those three different versions of the story. For you see, the first fo folks to hear the story were people really just like you and me. They weren't really any different than we are today in the 21st century. They couldn't vote for the first kid. They couldn't vote for the second kid. And they were left with a feeling of, what do we do? Because you see, the correct answer to Jesus' question is, which one did the will of his father is neither. Neither did the will of his father. The point being that God, God's intent for all of us as his children is for us never ever to face life and life's challenges by ourselves. Simply put, God wants to be there. He wants to be there for you and for me. 
God wants to befriend us. God wants to provide guidance that is higher than our own and inner resources deeper than our own and strength beyond ourselves. God does not want us to just go and do God's work nilly-willy. He wants to be in a relationship with us. He wants to work with us. Imagine yourself as a Pharisee on that day long, long ago, witnessing his teaching, his preaching, and yes, those wonderful parables, those wonderful miracles that were happening right before their eyes. And sooner or later, they did come to ask, by what authority are you doing these things? Are they from heaven or are they from earth? It's all about relationship with him. Oh. <sighs> I can easily identify with these two young men in the story this morning. Sometimes I want to say, yes, yes, God, I'll do it. Other times I'll say, eh, I don't really feel like it right now, but then go ahead and do it later on. This is really a picture of you and me, even in the 21st century. And in each of us, I would submit to you that there is an intersection an intersection of yes on one hand and no on the other. Because God knows that the temptation, the temptation is to live apart from God as a living friend and a savior. God knows that the temptation is to have a relationship with God without a life and deeds to go along with it, faith and works in other words. When Jesus asks the question, which one did the will of his father? Remember what the Pharisees said. The Pharisees tried to answer that it was the first one. But when did the Pharisees ever answer one of Jesus' questions correctly? They never did. Jesus simply ignores the response and he goes on to the answer. So the question really is, who among us is doing the will of God? Not the first kid and not the second. Look what he does at the end of the parable. There's the surprise. People like the tax collectors and the sinners, when they hear God's call, come to God, and they become his very best friends. And out of that friendship, they go and do the things that God wants them to do. He told them, even the prostitutes are going into the kingdom before you, all because they're willing to respond to the call and to hear his voice. Today we are standing, I would submit to you, at the intersection of yes on one hand or no on the other. It's our choice. Hopefully, we will make the right choice and respond to the voice of God when he calls any time. Amen. Dear friends, if you will, turn with me to, now to our second hymn of the morning entitled, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. It is selection number 387.
Thank you. You may be seated. Gladly, joyfully do we at this time as God's children of faith present our offerings unto the good Lord's safekeeping. And by way of a simple reminder, I would ask that all of our folks watching the home this morning, please remember Trinity Presbyterian Church because it truly takes all of us to uh, enjoy a continued ministry in this time and place with the, uh, the help and the love and the grace of the Holy Spirit walking alongside us. So we ask that you please consider carefully, give generously, and remember God really does love you. Amen. and let me sing all words only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from
and joyfully, graciously do we offer these gifts unto you and under your safekeeping this day. As always, we pray that you bless our offerings that go toward the sustainment of the gospel news of your Son, Jesus Christ, in this, your church. We ask that you bless these offerings. More importantly, bless all of us gathered here who draw the very breath of life to your one and only Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. What a joy it is to know him. What a joy it is to know life more abundant through him and through the Holy Spirit himself. Bless us, I pray, in his name. Again, thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. We might see you on The Voice someday. You never know. <laughs> I certainly hope. I have uh, a list of uh, joys and concerns before me this morning. Um, it is a joy to see that little itty-bitty baby back there in the rear pew this morning. I and you and your family look beautiful. Uh, we are delighted to see you and that you're willing to share this magnificent gift of God with all of us this day. Many of you have also been asking about uh, my wife Karen prior to church this morning. Uh, as you know, Karen underwent a, a heart catheterization this past week at Commonwealth Hospital in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, it went well. The doctor thankfully did not find uh, any area where he needed, he felt that uh, she should have a, a stent installed. Um, however, her blood pressure went up significantly to the point where, as she lay in the table, he had to uh, prescribe a certain medication to bring it down within normal levels. Uh, it's very scary, but thankfully she got through it, and as you can imagine, is home this morning uh, in recovery. Uh, and instructed not to do very much for the next several days. Both Karen and I thank you for your thoughts and prayers in this regard. Um, needless to say, these procedures can be a bit tedious. We continue to pray for Roger Griffith, who was at Geisinger Hospital this past week. I really don't have much to offer more than the fact that he will be receiving therapy in the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, through Geisinger, uh, we pray for him and, uh, of course, the good people at Second Presbyterian Church in Pittston. Betty Hanley was uh, in the hospital as well several days ago. She's back home and uh, sounds pretty good and uh, will also be receiving in-home in therapy. Marianne Williams uh, is a bit under the weather this morning. So we pray for God's blessing to abide with Mary Ann uh, at this time. Again, my sister-in-law, Jerry Kane, way over on the other side of the Commonwealth in Indiana County, um, as I mentioned last week, has been suffering with COVID. Uh, she's all right, but it's just one of those nasty things that hits from time to time. Uh, and along with this, I should... I guess I'm kind of like advertising. I would encourage you, if you haven't, to be immunized for the flu and the COVID this fall. It's going around again, so please uh, take it seriously. Having grown up in a medical family, I take it seriously. So please uh, get immunized if you possibly can. Uh, the new grandmother who also is not here this morning, Barbara Rinker, I believe is on her way to New York City to meet her new granddaughter for the first time. We pray for traveling mercies and that uh, she enjoys a good trip. Lastly, um, on, a, on a wider scale, I don't think it's any secret that there's turmoil in Israel this morning. Uh, Israel came under attack yesterday by the Hamas in Palestine out of the Gaza Strip. They're shooting real bullets and they're firing real missiles. They're at war. 
hopefully God will see fit out of his infinite wisdom to bring this to a cessation quite soon because this is very, very serious business. Not for them, not just for them, but for the life of, of all of us. Precautions are being taken around uh, the United States in places like a New York City, Philadelphia, Atlanta, to help protect the Jewish community because it's that serious. So please keep this issue in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we follow what, uh, what transpires in the coming hours. Are there any others? Is there anything I forgot? Oh, one of you asked uh, how I'm feeling following our trip to Sicily this past week. And uh, interestingly, as I mentioned to Art prior to the service, the older you get, the longer it takes to get back into your circadian rhythm. Uh, I think I'm almost back on Eastern Standard Time, but it's a slow process. So uh, if I seem a little wobbly, a little out of kilter, you'll know why. It just takes a while to adjust to the different time zones. And I think that's it. Anything else? That's it. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer. Well, Lord, we do thank you for the gift of today, the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, the one who is indeed the light of the world, your world. We look to you particularly today for a goodly portion of your light and your spirit to rest upon us, your faithful souls here at Trinity Presbyterian Church. We pray that you bless us, you walk with us, you abide with us, and carry us forward hand in hand with your son, Christ Jesus, in the days ahead. As just mentioned moments ago, we offer prayers on behalf of Betty Hanley, Roger Griffith, Marianne Williams, uh, Jerry Kane, Karen Thompson, Barbara Rinker, and uh, a special prayer for that teeny tiny baby that we so are able to enjoy this morning in our sanctuary. May the new parents be richly blessed. We pray also for world peace. May your peace prevail, we pray, dear God, most earnestly. In the name of Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Truly, I pray, may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, abide with each and every one of us this day. I pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit himself. God bless you all, and enjoy a wonderful afternoon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Till we meet.